Hey everyone, it's CJ. Uh, I wanted to make a quick video here to kind of help everybody that's going to be at the Capitol on Tuesday, March 28th for the committee hearing on both House Bill 1911 and House Bill 375. There are also some other bills um, that aren't necessary for anybody to be at, but we'll let you know what those are as well coming up. Um, but I wanted to help you, if you haven't been to the Capitol before and you haven't testified in front of a committee, um, in front of a bunch of people, kind of give you an idea of what to expect. Now the committee hearing probably won't take place any earlier than about 10.30. That's at the earliest. Um, quite honestly, people that show up around noon will still have a chance to testify. So there's no sense to be in a hurry. However, the earlier you get to the Capitol, the earlier you can sign up, and then that means the earlier you can go if you need to go. Uh, if you do come early and you're able to testify early, there are some other bills uh, that we could also use your help testifying on. But again, uh, those bills aren't so controversial that we think they're not gonna get passed very difficult. Um, so here's what to expect. Come to the Capitol. Uh, you, just so you know, if you have a license to carry, or a license from another state that enjoys reciprocity with Texas, you can carry that handgun, open or concealed, into the Texas Capitol. And you can also carry it into the committee hearings uh, to testify while you're testifying. And you can also carry it onto the floor of the full Senate or the full House if you're around doing that. You can carry your gun into uh, your representative's offices, um, into the dining facility, doesn't matter. Pretty much everywhere in the Capitol. Now, what I'll tell you is, if you do come to the Capitol and you've got an out-of-state license, what's going to happen is they're going to have to run that license. So that process may take anywhere from one minute to who knows. Um, I've done it twice. The first time it took about a minute. The second time it took about 15 minutes. And that was mainly because of a communications uh, error about which state my license was from. So uh, just so you know, you can do that as well. Uh, once you come in, what you're going to want to do and, and where we're all going to kind of congregate is you're going to want to go to the elevators, go all the way down to E2, Echo 2, uh, that floor, which is the bottom floor in the Capitol, and head all the way north to the end of the extension. Uh, you should see a big open area, kind of like an atrium, uh, inside windows and things like that. And that's kind of where we will be congregating. Now we should have some people at the doors. Uh, periodically but make sure you see one of us either myself or Rick Briscoe or David Ahmed um, we'll, we'll be wearing our OCT pins just find someone from Open Carry Texas and we've got stickers that we'd like everybody to wear to, to support constitutional carry because not only do we want them to hear from us we want them to see us we need to be present in the Capitol so that everybody sees who we are now once you get down there there are several kiosks and at these kiosks they're kind of like iPads um, that's where you're gonna to go to testify or to sign up and register to testify. It's a very simple process. Um, it's very self-guided, but again, we are gonna be there to help you if you need that help in setting up to register. And you can register to, to testify on any bill. Uh, there's two ways that you do it. You pick a bill, you hit register. It'll say you wanna register for or opposed or on a bill. Then it'll say, do you wanna testify or not testify? So let's say it's a bill about macaroni and cheese and how much cheese that is allowed to be in a, in a thing of macaroni um, and it's not something you really have a position on, then you can testify on the bill. If you have a position for X amount of cheese and macaroni, then you can testify for it if that's what the bill does or you can testify against it or sign up. Um, if you click don't testify, it's fine. Your vote will be registered to the committee as a citizen that is against this particular bill. Not everybody can testify. Not everybody can get up in front of someone and really express themselves. Some people just aren't comfortable with it. Uh, some people don't know how to properly do it. They don't know what to say. And that's fine. We just ask you to go and, and sign up and register for HB 1911 and HB 375. And then put do not testify. And that's perfectly fine. Um, we do want people to testify as well if you're comfortable. And there are two ways to do that. One, you can just speak off the cuff. And the other is you have a prepared statement that you can read. Now keep in mind, generally you have three minutes to testify in most of these committee hearings. However, in these hearings that where there's a lot of public interest, because I guarantee you there are gonna be a lot of people for the bill and there are gonna be a lot of people against the bill. 
Um, generally, the committees will lower that number to two minutes of speaking. That's it, only two minutes. So uh, make sure that when you prepare your remarks, um, you kind of rehearse them so that you are within that two minute window. Now they do have a timer where you'll see it's got three, it's got green, you're good to go, keep talking, yellow means you're getting close, a blinking red, um, time to stop. Um, or you can just speak. Now, what do you say? What do you say when you go into these hearings? Obviously, uh, there are three things you've got to say right off the bat. Who you are, who you represent, and your position on the bill. So in other words, if I'm testifying, I would say my name is CJ Grisham, I'm the, I represent Open Carry Texas, and I'm testifying for the bill. Now, we ask you to say you're a member of Open Carry Texas and you're, you're, you're fine to do that, um, but please testify on behalf of yourself. Um, there are only, only the representatives, uh, like the board, uh, we're only asking to represent, actually be there on behalf of the organization. And really we do that so that we can testify on behalf of the people that can't be there. So if you're there, we want you to testify on behalf of yourself. It's important that they know that it's you that wants this bill to pass and that someone's not directing you, okay? So make sure you say that, your name, uh, who you represent, which is gonna be yourself. You just say, I represent myself and I'm here to oppose, support, well, we want you to support the bill. Uh, if it's another bill, like HB 866, obviously we want you to oppose it. Then, just go into what you've gotta say. Explain why you want this kind of a, a bill, why you want constitutional carry. What I would say is, Kind of stay away from the abstract ideas. I want constitutional carry because by golly it says shall not be infringed. Believe me, we all agree with that. Um, but it's important that you really talk about it and, and say, look, think, well, I don't want to tell you what to say, but try to stay away from abstract ideas. Obviously you want to go in there and constitutional carry is supposed to mean what it says, which is constitutional, shall not be infringed. Um, but I'll be honest with you, when a legislature hear you, hears you start talking about the Constitution, they have what's called MIGO, my eyes glaze over. Uh, they, they don't care about the Constitution one way or the other, whether they support it or oppose it, it doesn't matter. Because um, if, if they support your constitutional rights, where well, you're just telling them what they already support, and those people that want to step on them don't care anyway. So uh, get, get personal. Why do you support constitutional carry? What is it? Is it because... Uh, you want to stand as a roadblock or as an opposition to the criminals who already have constitutional carry? Uh, is it because you don't think you should have to ask for a permission slip to exercise a right? Is it because we're Texas? This is the Lone Star State, the land of Gonzales and the Alamo. We take a stand, we defend ourselves. Uh, can you imagine if all those patriots in the, at the Alamo or in Gonzales or San Jacinto uh, had to go and get a license before they could go out there and fight for their state and for themselves and their families. So uh, you can say that you just don't believe in having to get a permit. You can talk about how Texas is behind the times. We're one of only 17 states that requires, I'm sorry, one of 16 now, one of 16 states that requires a license to be able to carry a handgun in self-defense. Um, whatever that is, if you have a personal story, uh, I can't afford it. The licenses are too expensive. Now, I'll tell you right now, they're lowering the cost. We're going to get a bill passed, uh, SB 16 and HB 300, that's going to lower the cost to 40. That's, that's a done deal. That's not even something really, really we need to argue about. It's going to get passed. So, if you're going to use the cost thing, it's still an expensive license. You're still talking about 150 bucks. Uh, to get a license because you still have to pay for the class and all the other and the 40 bucks and that's a hundred dollars right there and then you've got your fingerprints and all that so you know perhaps that 140 bucks is still something uh, that you can't afford and I'm not talking 40 bucks 140 for the license I'm talking 40 bucks for the license 60 bucks for the class and then all the other stuff so have a story tell them something um, tell them something that's meaningful to you why it's important to you and obviously convince them. And it's easier if you have a personal story. Now, I'm not saying don't get up there and talk about the Constitution, but um, just make sure you have something prepared. Once you're done, you get up, you can leave. Um, we're gonna have a, a place where our members can kind of congregate. We're gonna have some pizza there for you. Um, we're gonna have some special things, like we're gonna try and get some photos together of as many people as we can out in the little atrium. Uh, 
have people go talk to their representatives. We're also going to be recognized on the House floor. So there's going to come a point where we're going to ask everybody to go up to the House floor so that you can be recognized and stand up. And what they're going to do is they're going to welcome Open Carry Texas and all the other groups that are there um, by name so that it's pretty much put into the record and uh, people can see us. If you have any more questions, put your questions in the comment box. Uh, we'll try to answer those as much as possible. Have fun, be yourself, but get people out there. If you can, bring a friend, uh, bring a neighbor, bring a bunch of friends, do a caravan, uh, do a carpool, whatever it takes, um, and, and get as many people there as possible because it is important that you show up on March 28th. And we will be there, I'll probably be there by 8.30 or so in the morning. Um, but we're gonna have, we're gonna be there all day long. Remember, go down to E2, that's extension is what it means. Go downstairs to E2 and then go all the way north or really if you go in the elevators, there's only one way you can go when you get to E2. Uh, and then go all the way straight until you hit that uh, windowed atrium there. So thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you there and we're gonna have fun and let's get this done. Texas can be the 15th constitutional carry state with your help. And thanks for all that you do for gun rights in Texas. Thanks for what you've done to make Open Carry Texas such a success so that we can go to the Capitol and fight for you and fight for Texans.